Okay, so what we're doing for our uh, next project, and in my opinion, it's going to be one of our most usable projects. We're going to make a sewing bag. And I gave you a pattern that looks like this. <clears throat> and it says, cut two of fabric, two of lining, and two of interfacing. Now, I gave you the two pieces of interfacing in your bag, so you should have your two pieces of interfacing like that. Okay, so I've cut out my two pieces for the body. So here they are. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to cut out two pieces for the body. This is going to be the outside of the bag. And then two pieces that's for your lining. And this is going to be the inside of your bag. All right, so that's what that pattern piece is. Then we've got one that says pocket, cut one of fabric, one of interfacing. And we've got another one that says pocket, and it says cut one of fabric, cut one of interfacing. Now you notice they're two different lengths. Now what that's going to be is I've got two panels here that I've made. This is the one we did in class. This is the one I did on the partial video. And this is the short pocket. That's what it's going to make. It's just going to be a flat pocket like that that we sew at the bottom and then sew some seams, you know, like this, you can see, and it just makes a pocket like this. Now, the long pocket pattern is to make a pocket like this. And see, it's a pocket that's actually gathered at the bottom, and so you can put thick things in it. So this long one, long pocket pattern is to make the gathered pocket side, and the short pocket pattern is to make the flat pocket. Now, I told you that all the girls under the age of 13 can make this flat pocket um, because it is going to be much harder to do this, and I know they feel like we've sort of maxed them out on, on our sewing project, so I don't want it to get too hard for them. So, y'all, uh, you so if you're under 13 and you're going to do two flat pockets, you would just cut two of these, and you, you wouldn't bother cutting a big one. All right, so that's what the small pocket piece is for. And then for you girls over 13, you're going to have one of each. You're going to do one side like this and one side like that. So that's why there's two uh, pocket patterns in there. So also I sent you the interfacing. So you should already have the interfacing for this. So you will cut your strips of fabric. And here I have my strips of fabric. One for my big pocket and one for my short pocket, or rather I should say one for the gathered pocket and one for the flat pocket. Okay, so I have my fabric for my pocket and my interface, and I've got to cut it out over there. All right, so that's part, that part of the pattern. And so the last is our strap. And this is obvious. It's going to be the part that's the top of our sewing bag, and it says cut two of fabric, and then you also need two strips of interfacing an inch and a half by 24 inches long. That's not in your bag. And it's because, y'all can hear my phone going off. It's because when I got home, I found a stack of the strap interfacing. <laughs> I forgot to bring it and put it in the bag. Y'all saw how I was ill prepared last week. Had, I've had a crazy last three weeks. Um... But that worked out fine because we only did the two panels. So next week, I'm going to show y'all about making the straps. I'm putting it together, and I will bring this. Hopefully, I will not forget it, and give it to you, and you can take it home and use it to make your straps. So I have the interfacing for your straps. I'll just give them to you next week. All right, and here's my two pieces that I cut for my straps. Now, don't freak out because yours is going to be one solid piece of fabric, and you can see where I sewed two strips of fabric together to get me a piece big enough to, uh, to use for my pattern. The reason I did that is because I was just using these sample pieces of upholstery fabric to make my bag, and this was all I had left. So I sewed two strips together to get enough to make two straps. So don't get confused by that. You're not, you're not sewing two straps pieces of fabric together. You should just have one solid colored piece of fabric that you use to, uh, for this pattern to cut out a strap. All right, let's get started. 
Okay, we'll start on the body of our bag first. Now I've got my measuring tape and my marker and my chalk. My chalk is for marking the front of my fabric when something's going to show. And my marker is for when I do mark the back of something or find my interfacing all pieces which are not going to show. Okay, so we're going to take our first panel and on the back side of the fabric we're going to put a piece of our interfacing. Now, we're going to measure down 9 inches and mark it. Do that on both sides. And then, we're going to draw a line. Wish me something I can draw a line with. Okay, here's my ruler over here. Got me a carpenter's square. I'm going to use it in sewing. Okay. So I'm going to use this. Draw me a line. I'm going to do that to both panels. On the back of that panel, I'm going to put my interface in, measure down 9 inches, and draw me a line. But to make the video shorter, I'm just going to show, uh, I'm just going to do one on video, and then the other one I'm going to turn it off and do it. So you do both. Okay, so now what we're going to do on this line is we're going to cut the interfacing. Do not cut through the fabric. I'm sorry, I just assumed that y'all knew that, but I think somebody asked me in class, and then later I think a mom asked me, uh, and I realized that I wasn't being clarifying that. You're going to cut on this line, but you're only cutting the interfacing. Do not cut your fabric. All right, let's pin this interfacing down really good because we're going to we're fixing to sew this interface into this panel of fabric and it's going to fight us because it's really thick interfacing. I think this is probably about the thickest interfacing they make, but since we're making a storage bag, I mean a uh, sewing bag, it's going to be a tote bag. It, I wanted something really good and sturdy, and so this will keep it from being floppy. <clears throat> So we're gonna we have to pin this really good because it's gonna fight us because of being stiff. So do we'll call it a Megan pin because she likes to pin things really good. So if I say do a Megan pin, that means pin it a lot. If I say do an Alina pin, that means just just a little bit here and there to get you by. <laughs> All right. So and I'm pinning on both sides of this line because. We're going to, uh, once we cut that and, and then we sew it, it's going to want to flop open on us. So, pin on both sides of that line you just drew. And you could cut it first and then pin it. It doesn't matter. I've actually done it both ways now. On the other one, I cut it first and then pinned it all in place. And this may actually be hard. I don't know. This is going to be the first time I pinned it and then cut it. All right, so there, I've pinned it. Now, what have I done with my scissors? Okay, here they are. Now, I'm going to cut that. Oh, it works fine. All right, so I'm cutting along the line of the interfacing. I'm not cutting the fabric. <clears throat> so, now I'm going to sew all around my interfacing. I'm attaching it to my fabric. And then I'm going to sew on both sides of the part I cut. Okay, I'm going to go sew that down and I'll be right back. Okay, <clears throat> so now I've got my two panels sewed together with my interface. And see, I've got both of them cut and marked. And I forgot to... Okay, yeah, I did tell y'all cut through only the interface. And right when I tell you to mark and cut through that, don't cut through the fabric. Just cut through the interface and I can't remember if I told y'all that or not. Um, okay, so I don't know if you can see it, if I can get up close enough. 
to where you can see the fab the thread where I sewed on both sides of the cut on the interfacing. Remember, the fabric has not been cut. The fabric is still the full piece of fabric we started with. But on this side, well, you might can see it. There's where I cut my interfacing, where I marked and cut it, and then I sewed on both sides of it. And you can sew really close to the edge of your interfacing. The point is just to attach it to the fabric because it's not the iron-on or glue-on kind. Um, we're, you, you know, you might you might not want to use white thread. You might want to use a thread that blends. But for the sake of the video, uh, I'm using a white thread so that you can see where it's at. Okay, so I've done both of my panels. And um, see what this does is when when we make our bag, that folds easy where we cut that interface and sewed it. And that's going to make the bottom edge of our bag instead of it having a rough curved point. Okay, so that's our two panels. So we're going to work on the pocket now. Well, first we have to make the pocket, so I might as well just put that aside. And we'll do the easy pocket first, the small one. Oh yeah, I've got to cut my interfacing for it. Okay, so... We have our piece of fabric and we have our piece of interfacing that should have been in your bag. It's your pocket interfacing. And we're going to put it on the back side of our fabric. And here's the good side. We're attaching it to the back side. Now we're going to be folding over each edge. Fold over and then fold over again to make an edge like that. But it's going to be too bulky and stiff to, uh, to fold the interfacing over twice. So you're going to trim down your interfacing. Mm, I need both sides. I'm actually going to trim it down like a quarter inch. That might even be a little more. I don't know, but I'm going to start with something about that wide can see cutting off about that much okay now when I lay it on my piece of fabric I have a little bit of fabric sticking out on each side and I can roll the fabric up once to where it's only wrapped fabric see like that and then when I roll it the second time I'm only getting the interfacing once, one thickness of fold over on the interface. And so then we would top stitch it. And we want to top stitch it right along the edge. You don't want to top stitch it on this edge. You don't want to top stitch it in the middle. You want to stitch it over here as close to this edge because we're trying to make a neat flat edge. Now, I actually think I need to trim mine down a little more because it, it I just don't have enough um, like I have enough on this side, but right here I don't. So either I cut it crooked. Yeah, I did. See, I didn't cut the same amount off. So that might help if I fold it. And then that way when I cut it across, I'm s I sort of know that I have the same amount off on all sides. Alright, let's see if that works now. Yeah, it's a little better. Okay. So I'm going to fold that over. And then fold it again. And sew that down. And I'll be right back. Okay, I got my uh, short pocket. The flat pocket. I've got it hemmed on each side. See how I turned it over and sewed right on the edge. Now you don't have to do this end. That's fine. Just leave it like that. So it's just the two long ends is what we want to hem. So there's my short pocket. And I can see while I was doing that, that this has the potential to be frustrating to y'all. Uh, maybe it's going to affect you like the sewing that little bias tape on the bib. Um, because 
it is bulky, it is small, it is, you know, I can see where you're going to get frustrated. So, I'm trying to think of maybe some ways, some rules, things you could do to where it won't be as frustrating. So I was straightening out, trimming up my piece of interface in here for my other pocket, the long pocket. I still don't have it trimmed. I want to trim it down just a little bit more. So I was thinking maybe if we ironed the fabric over. Alright, so here I've got for my long pocket. So like if we folded it over and then went and ironed it. Before we did the second fold over, maybe that would make it more simple. I don't know. Whatever, if you can think of something you can do. Like in class, I pre-pinned it. Um, but I had to pin it so often. Then when I was sewing it, I could only sew like two inches, take out a pin. Two inches, take out a pin. Uh, so I didn't really think that helped me. and actually made it bulk up on me a little bit. So maybe you could try sewing it. I can't really test this to see if it would work. Because this is upholstery fabric and it won't really iron. It, I mean, I'll iron it and it'll just pop back out. Um, but y'all had cotton, so or ironable fabric, so you might could try that. Like, definitely pin it. I, I do know that I would save myself a lot of trouble if I would have pinned it because when I'm folding it over, it wants to push to the other side, and so when I was sewing it, it was fighting me because um, it was pushing to the other side. So definitely pin it. See, that's why we call it the Alina pin, because I'm not, I have a tendency to try to get by without pinning. And I, I do believe, though, I have trained myself from this class to pre-iron. It just makes a world of difference. So I'm doing way better about ironing my fabric um, when I do a project, and that's helped me out a lot. So now if I could just make myself, teach myself to pin everything. Okay, so if it's pinned, the interfacing cannot shift to the other side when you're folding. So definitely do that. And then you can experiment with folding it over and ironing the fold on the interfacing on both sides. And then maybe it would be easy for you to flip it the second time and sew it down. Okay, so here's the short one, the flat pocket. And we're going to take one of our panels. And right here you see our line where we done the stitching of our interfacing, where we cut the interfacing and we stitched it on both sides. Okay, that's where the edge of our pocket is going to go. So we're going to lay our pocket right close to that line, not over the line, not either one of those seams that we make. Don't lay it over either one. Just lay it close to the one, you know, that's the closest to the pocket. And then once again, we're going to pin our pocket to the panel. So it can't move around on us. And if you, you're going to want your bigger needle. Um, this is really thick. I may end up having to go out and sew in this on my upholstery machine because I'm using all upholstery fabric for all three things. The pocket, the body, and the lining. Plus, I've got all that interfacing in there. So, I'm getting some really thick, sticks, uh, stiff stuff going on. And it may not sew. It may break my needle or whatever. So, I may have to go out to my upholstery machine. Now, yours shouldn't be as thick because we use thin cotton or other type of fabric for the pocket and the lining. You only have the thickness for the body, and then some of you didn't even use the thick for the body. I like using the thick for the body because it makes it tougher because this bag is going to get a lot of wear and tear being set on stuff. Now, what, what I mean when I tell you to get your um, bigger needle is if you have a pack of needles like this, and see it says 11, 14, and 16. And as... The size goes up. How do you get them out? The needle 
gets thicker. The 11 is a thinner needle, the 14's in the middle, and a 16 is a thick needle. And you can see my size, uh, my size 16 needle is missing because it's in my machine. So you're going to want your, your size 16 or 18, even if you have one, a needle for this project, probably. If you do the 11, it may break on you and or you just may have trouble. Um, it, so this is a good time to learn how, if you don't know how to, to swap out your needle, uh, use your sewing manual or Google it. But you're probably going to want your thicker needle to be on there. Okay. <clears throat> so we've got this pinned on. And what we're going to do is measure three inches from the side with our chalk because this is on top of our fabric. So at three inches, I'm making a mark. And then I'm drawing a line all the way across because I'm going to be following that to sew. And then I'm going to do it also down here. So there we go. We've got our two three inch marks. And the reason we're having to do this at three inches is this is going to be the corner of our bag. But don't worry about that. That's just why I'm telling you, you need a seam at three inches on top of your um, pocket. Now, that's going to leave us, see if that's sewed down right there, that's going to leave us with this big long space in the middle. And the instructions say for you to leave that all one big pocket because a book or a magazine will fit in there. Um, but I'm not going to be using mine for carrying books. I'm going to be using mine for sewing stuff or craft stuff. Um, so I actually want it to be a more secure, smaller pocket to hold, you know, uh, small items. Because if you just have a big pocket like that, you can see where it would, you know, kind of flop open if it was something small. So I'm going to make another mark in the middle of mine and sew it down. But you don't have to do that. You can do it however you want. Or you could sew yours several times and make little bitty pockets. So I've got roughly 14 inches left in the middle there. So at 7 inches, I'm going to mark <clears throat> and do me another line. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to attach this pocket to this panel. So I'm going to sew the side. I'm going to sew the bottom all the way down and sew up the other side. And then I'm going to top stitch these marks and attach it to the panel. I do not sew this top part. See, this is the top of the pocket. It's going to have to be to where we can open it. Remember what I showed you on this one? See, this one's already been done. So see, that's a pocket now. So you got to leave the top open. Okay, so I'm going to do that. And then I'll be back with my long panel made and I'll show you how to do the pocket the panel with the gathered pockets now remember if you're under 13 you have the option of doing both of your panels this way with the flat pockets okay so here we are with our other panel and our long pocket piece and you can tell, you can see that it's longer than our panel, whereas the other pocket was the same size. So what we do is we pin it on each end. Remember, right above, right above the line here where we've got the stitching, that's where we pin it. And then here on the other side, I get this and bring the edge down to the end and pin it on. Okay, so see now we've got a big thing in the middle. Don't worry about that right now. And now you're going to mark it just like we did on the other one. Going to mark it three inches from the end. Remember, we're making our corners. And if we wanted to be, you know, super perfect and professional, 
it would have been good if we would have did measured the three inches and cut the um corner cut the interface and in, I'm sorry my brain and stitched on either side of it just like we did down here but we're not the the bottom is you know you like your bottom to sit nice and flat but your your corners don't have to be as now this may look confusing to you right here on mine because you could see a seam just ignore that on mine. My piece of fabric wasn't long enough, so I had to sew a little piece on to get a long enough piece of fabric. So that's why that's there. Just ignore it. Okay, so you can see my mark. I've marked down three inches on this side, three inches on that side. So I'm going to pin on the other side of my mark to hold my pocket secure. And this is bending my pins. Um... Because we're going through interfacing. If you have a pin with a little thing on the end, it's going to be much easier for you to use. Uh, Chastity, I know the ones that of y'all's that we were using in class, that's probably going to hurt your fingers trying to push through this interfacing. Okay, so I'm pinned on either side of my line. Now I'm going to do um, what I told you earlier. I'm going to top stitch here, and I'm going to top, stop, top stitch my end. We can't sew the bottom at, down yet because this is where our whole um, gathering comes into effect. Okay, so we're doing... Oh, there goes my phone again. <clears throat> so we're doing... We've got this sewed on here. So I'm going to take my pins out so we can see what we've what we've got left in the middle here. So and I'll show you how. And then this is where the math comes in. Okay, this is what we've got. We've got that sewed on. And remember, this is just chalk right here. So, I mean, we can take a damp rag and, and wipe the chalk off to where you can't see it when you get finished. But it's very good visual aid while we're sewing. Also for this video. Okay, so this is what we've got left in the middle. So this is basically where a math lesson comes in. You just take whatever fabric you have left over and measure it. And it should be roughly around 22 inches. So half of 22 inches is 11. So we're going to go to the halfway place, which is 11, and mark it. And then what's half of 11? Half of 11 is five and a half. So there's the five and a half mark. So I've got five and a half and 11. So there's my mark for that. Now here on the other side, remember the halfway point was 11, so I've got my 11 inches. So I'm marking it at Five and a half. So now see how I've got that marked? Should be roughly, the first one's going to be three inches. And then from this point on, it should be like about five and a half. And then the last one's going to be three inches from the edge. Okay, that's our marks on that part. Now we measure the inside of the body between this and this. And I've got roughly 14. So what's half of 14? Half of 14 would be 6, no, 7, 7. And so half of 7 would be 3.5. So I'll mark it at three and a half. So now, on this part in here, it's going to be, you're going to have a mark at three and a half, three and a half. These are going to be roughly, these marks are roughly going to be three and a half from each other, from the edge of where it's sewed down, where we sewed it down. So now what you're going to do is you're going to 
take your mark on your pocket and line it up with the mark on the body and pin it securely to hold there and then you're going to top stitch it on your machine. Secure it to your the body of your panel by sewing across that. And remember to do a little back stitching up here because it's going to be the top of the pocket and it needs to be firm and hold it. Okay, so do that with each of those marks. See how I'm lining up the marks. So now my puffiness is becoming more organized. So I'm going to do all that and I'll be back. Okay, so I've got all this sewed on. Let's see, it should be turned this way because there's the, the bendable part. So this is what it's looking like. But we got to secure the bottom. So see, uh, everywhere I measured and made a mark, I sewed that, lined it up with my marks that I made on the fabric. And so how you do this is you take, just kind of take like a half inch fold on this side and a half inch fold on that side. And then you're going to have rough, make another, like that right there, and on that side. See, then when you sew it down, I'm going to sew across, and it's going to make the bottom of the pocket. And you can see this one right here that we did in class. See how I just folded it over and then sewed it, sewed it down. I keep saying sold as in S-O-L-D, not S-E-W-E-D, sewed. Um, there could even possibly be different ways that you could do it. Um... Well, I don't know. I guess sticking with the instructions looks, looks like it might be best at, the, at this point. I was trying to think if maybe I'd saw some done like that. You know, unattached. But I think the way we did it in class is probably going to be the best looking way. Just fold it over a little bit. Take the slack. Fold it over a little bit on each side, mash it down, and sew it across. And do that, and it's really too small of a fold. Well, you might could pin it, like if you fold it and then pin it in the middle so that you know where the middle is, then you know where your fold is. That might work. That, that's looking like that would work. So you fold it over a quarter to a half inch. See, is that making sense? I'm folding that over. And then I'm just going to sew across the bottom. And that's um, all that we're going to do for part one. So this is what you should have completed by class next Tuesday. Two panels, one with a flat pocket and one with a gathered pocket. Now that's if you're over 13. If you're under 13, you may have, have two panels with a flat pocket. Just whichever way you just choose to do it. Alright, that's part one. I'll see y'all Tuesday and we'll work on part two.